And we now break into the uh, Steuben County uh, press conference. Uh, going on, just beginning uh, right now, this is uh, Darlene Smith, the Steuben County Public Health uh, nurse. At this time, we have two confirmed cases, COVID-19 cases in Steuben County. There is one resident in the town of Bath, and there is one in the town of Hornellsville. The resident uh, of Bath did attend an event uh, Saturday, March 14th, at the Bath Fire Department, and was also at the Taylor Health Center when symptomatic at both events. However, at both places, excuse me. However, uh, Taylor had already in instituted proper precautions of personal protective equipment, including masks. So the, indiv the individual had a mask on. Those who are, uh, we want to remind uh, folks that those who are known to have been in close contact with the individual have already been contacted and are under self-isolation. Others who may have attended the event should monitor themselves for symptoms and contact their health care provider if they develop a fever of 100, a cough, and shortness of breath in, within the next two weeks, 14 days. This is County Manager Jack Wheeler. Uh, so uh, Darlene provided you with uh, the operational status update related to COVID-19. Uh, but we also want to uh, stress to the public that, you know, this is a time for action, not fear. Um, you know, as much as we were happy to see no confirmed cases, you know, over the last week and beyond, uh, it, it's just a matter of time for every community in New York, uh, every county in New York uh, to experience uh, a case or multiple cases of COVID-19. So we have been prepared. Um, we likely will see more, and we are prepared for that, but we are taking and have taken very proactive steps. Um, for public protection. Uh, we have daily conference and briefing calls with hospital systems and providers um, to monitor their situation, uh, to know how many uh, tests their, uh, their hospital systems are conducting, um, and to monitor those. Um, we have, and I can't stress it enough, just a great public health staff, a great emergency management staff that are on top of this. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been issuing press releases uh, daily when updates become available. Uh, we will continue to do so via Facebook. Um, this seemed like the, the best medium to use today since we have obviously very uh, important updates. Um, the other thing that, uh, you know, I, I think, in, and it's in Darlene's world, but we would stress is, uh, and I think it's been clear through what uh, you folks have all seen across the state and across the nation, testing supplies are in, are in short demand. Uh, you know, it's, it's cold season, it's allergy season. People with a runny nose um, and, and other symptoms that are not related to COVID-19 do not have the need to be tested at this time. They are in short supply. Our hospital systems are, uh, you know, becoming more and more uh, busy uh, related to COVID-19. So, you know, people just need to use uh, common sense need to use calm uh, uh, in, their own, uh, in their own personal lives um, and only contact uh, health care providers um, uh, with COVID-19 questions if, if they truly are uh, symptomatic with the COVID-19 symptoms. At this point, I think we'd open up to questions. This is uh, Jeff Murray from the Star Gazette. Uh, can you tell me how many people are uh, in quarantine in the county right now and, and how many tests you have pending? So I believe that uh, we've done over 20 tests across the uh, various different hospitals across the county. And, and that's uh, something that we're still trying to work out because some people are not necessarily tested in Steuben County. They might be tested in, in Schuyler. We had actually one report of a test coming in from Cuga Medical Center of an individual um, that uh, was tested over there. So we're, we're working very closely with our hospital systems to be able to determine how many tests are actually being given to Steuben County residents based upon the location of the test. So that's uh, kind of the situation with that. As far as the, the uh, you know, current number of people that are under isolation and quarantine, I'll let Darlene address that. Um, we currently have 16. Thank you. And that's a, you know, voluntary, uh, no, 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 that's no, mandated. No, okay. Mandatory. Mandatory uh, yeah. quarantines on some and, and some are self-quarantined. So uh, that's a combination. 
Hold on. Sorry. Uh, for, for clarification. Uh, In the 16 number? Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry. Scratch that. Go ahead. Ariel Sutherland. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, can everybody hear me? Let's go with Ariel. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so for, you said you're running low on tests. What are the backup plans to get more testing supplies if there is that one? We, we have placed an order for testing supplies, um, as you can imagine, uh, so has everyone else. So it's, a, it's, it's um, put us behind in that aspect. However, the, the supplies have slowly started to uh, arrive as of today. But I don't have a good projection on, on when we will get our order completed to be able to stand up uh, a drive-through testing. And, and so uh, the hospital systems and other providers do have, uh, and, and we don't have those numbers, but they do have uh, their own supplies on hand. So it's not like we have zero in, in the county at this point, but we have days ago, um, actually probably about a week ago at this time, uh, uh, placed orders through New York State for testing supplies. Um, and as you can imagine, with the no numbers growing, especially in New York City and downstate faster than they are here, a lot of those supplies are being directed to other areas of the state. But we, as Darlene mentioned, we are seeing more supplies slowly trickle in. So the important thing to remember about testing and supplies are if an individual is not sick and they have no symptoms, there's really no need for them to be tested. If they've got a uh, you know, a mild illness, cold-like symptoms or allergy symptoms that can be managed from home, you know, there's not a need for them to be tested. Uh, specifically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to test individuals that have been either identified as a severe illness or those that have come in contact uh, with, with um, illness for those that are uh, near a positive case. So that's what we're really trying to focus on right now as far as testing. And we really want to remind uh, residents that if, you know, if they fall into that last category of, of having, you know, some pretty significant symptoms, they need to call their, their uh, physician first. Try, you tell them what their symptoms are, and then um, go from there. It, it is not recommended that they automatically show up or, or call the emergency department. They they need to go to their physician first if they have one. Christina Episcopo, WENY News. Go ahead, Christine. Um, can we can we hear again what the event that the the two events that the one individual attended were? It was um, the, the one event Saturday evening was at the Bass uh, Fire Department. Um, it was a uh, annual uh, dinner type of event. And then um, the other organization, they were at uh, uh, Taylor, Taylor Nursing Home. Ariel, so from HP News, what about the uh, any contact going to grocery stores, uh, Walmart, Targets, any other stores that actually do hold a handful of people at any given time? Are, are you asking were the, were any either one of these two individuals at those stores? Is that what you're asking? Cor correct. Um, I can tell you that we have not yet completed um, tracking where the individuals have been. The, these two we knew for sure. We were able to validate this, so we wanted to be able to get that information out. Uh, Colleen Farrell from 13 Lab. Thanks, everybody. I had two questions. One is, any idea how many people were at the Bass Fire Department event? And secondly, are you releasing the ages and genders of the two confirmed cases yet? 100 people? There was approximately 100 people um, at the Bath Fire Department on Saturday evening. And um, at, at this time, I'm not yet releasing ages on the, on the two individuals who tested positive. Uh, George Gender? Oliver from WETM. Um, not yet. Is, is, okay, you. WETM, continue. Uh, sorry, was this person a member of the Bath Fire Department or a family member of a member? We can't confirm that uh, at this time. We're, uh, as Darlene mentioned, we are still uh, actively, our public health nurses are actively investigating. Christina, you can news again. 
Um, Go ahead, as Christine. this comes out, hi again, sorry. Um, as this comes out, uh, we've had questions that people will be getting notified as this information does come out, correct? That is correct. Ariel? Okay, um, sorry. The with the notifications, is that with a phone phone call? What if you know they don't have you don't have those people's information? How does that work? It, I mean, it would vary. I think certainly probably the preferred um, method of notification would be phone. Uh, if, if we if we have their cell phone or any phone, but if for some reason we don't, I mean, we we would we would contact them by any means possible. But I think the preferred method would be phone. It, it'll vary. I suspect. I have another question, if, if I can, if Ariel again. Um, what else is included with the investigation? What's those steps look like? Uh, I, I'm not sure I know what you mean. I mean, the, the investigation, what we, what we try to track down once there is a um, confirmed positive case is we try to track down where have they been and who have they been around at those places um, from the time of symptom onset. That's the most important uh, thing that we're trying to find out. Brian O'Neill, WLEA Radio, Hornell. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Um, I've heard a lot about the uh, bath um, uh, p patient. Was the Hornellville's the Hornellsville uh, COVID-19 patient with the bath patient, or is there separate information on the Hornellsville patient? That anything we can discuss? They are they are two unrelated cases. Okay, can you tell us anything about the Hornellsville patient in terms of, you know, where that person has been and things like that at this point? Uh, not yet. We are we are currently collecting information um, from the Hornellsville individual to to try to find out where they're um, where they have been. Thank you. So the Hornell case came in. Uh, a little bit later than the bath case, so that's why we're still working on the uh, the details on that because it did come in, uh, you know, early, early uh, late at, late morning, early afternoon. So uh, that's why we're continuing to conduct the investigation there. Any special recommendations to Hornellsville residents? Well, uh, it'd be, uh, Brian, it'd be a recommendation to everyone. I mean, obviously, this hits closer to home. We all, I think, anticipated that, you know, with, with the spread across the state, that it was a matter of time before uh, Steuben County was impacted. Uh, so it, our, our recommendations remain the same. Obviously, there's, there's fear and anxiety out there. Um, I, I think, you know, we should calm it down uh, as, as much as possible and, and use facts. Uh, that we rely upon, uh, you know, uh, you, you've all seen uh, the governor's additional executive orders that are coming out in terms of closing businesses and promoting social distancing. That's the best thing that we can do is if you can stay home, stay home. That's the best thing. That's I, I'll tell you, that's the advice that I give my family. You know, my, my kids don't need to have play dates right now. Um, stay home. Uh, you know, try to find good activities to do at home. And, and uh, we can all uh, play an important part in slowing uh, the, the spread and the severity of the spread here locally. Thank you. Anybody else for questions? Uh, Ariel, again, just to clarify, are they being uh, isolated at home or are they in, ho in the hospital? They are not in the hospital. They are both at home. And do they live with anybody else that's also being isolated with them? So uh, th those those people would go into the count of those who are in manda uh, mandatory quarantine. Do those people get automatically tested because of the closeness of their, you know, being being within the same home? They are not automatically tested. Um, they are being asked to monitor their symptoms. If if symptoms develop, then they would need to be tested. Just um, can I add just some uh, some tips on whether or not to test? Uh, uh, Tim already gave you kind of the, the criteria, but here's just some you know some tips. As Jack already mentioned, we are uh, strongly recommend recommending that everyone stay home while home. 
to monitor their, their symptoms. If the symptoms worsen, again, they need to call their, their physician first. Do not go to the ER, um, call the, their physician first. And then just follow, follow the accurate factual information that um, Sabin County Public Health is, is actively, daily, hourly putting out um, for the community um, so that they can be informed. And that's, I guess that's the other thing that I, w that I would say to, to, to both points is, uh, obviously you can imagine we've received a, a ton of calls, a ton of Facebook messages and such um, uh, throughout, uh, throughout the day. Um, what, what we want to stress is do not call 911 with, uh, with questions. Obviously 911 for emergencies is, is what you should use, but for questions related to COVID, it just bogs down our dispatchers, takes them away from their critical work. So do not call 911 with general questions. Uh, that, that I feel is, uh, is very important. Then also, um, you know, don't rely upon uh, rumors and, and other innuendo that's going around on Facebook and, and other places, word of mouth. Um, you know, obviously we can't get information out in, in real time, um, but we get it out as soon as we possibly can. So that press release, uh, you know, uh, for, for both cases, we're, we're drafted as quickly as possible. So we will get information out as soon as humanly possible. So rely upon facts, not upon rumor. Um, if individuals have uh, general questions, we do have uh, both the 211 helpline and also 607 664 2438. Um, now, that might not be staffed 24 7, um, where we are ramping up our staffing of that. That is uh, 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 public health nurses. Please you know, use your discretion. Don't call with general. Uh, questions about COVID, that, that really is for how uh, I have these symptoms, what do I need to do? As Darlene mentioned, she already gave the direction of what to do, and we, and we have posted all of that information on the Public Health Facebook page, so people you know, certainly access that. But um, for, for those who have serious questions about, you know, do I need to be tested, don't call 911, call 211 or that number. You can also call the New York State novel corona, uh, coronavirus hotline, which is a 24-7 uh, number that's being provided by the New York State Department of Health. And I think most of you have probably been advertising that for, uh, you know, a good few days now. But that number is 1-888-364-3065. So, you know, there's lots of good places to get good information, um, either through our Facebook page, our uh, website, through the Department of Health, uh, New York State Department of Health, or through the Center for Disease Control, cdc.gov. So certainly those are the locations that you need to be uh, looking for information. Any additional questions at this thank time? You, okay, thank you for participating. We will keep you all posted. Um, you know, we're exploring using Facebook Live or some other medium, but uh, if this works, you know, for urgent updates, uh, we might use this again, so we will uh, certainly stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today in 1480 WLEM, Brian O'Neill just wrapping up a press conference there with uh, Stupin County uh, Emergency Services Director Tim Marshall. Also on the call was Darlene Smith, the uh, county a public health nurse, and Steuben County Manager Jack Wheeler, and uh, and some others. And what they talked about was the uh, two cases, uh, confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Steuben County. One of them from Bath, one of them from Hornellsville. Um, what we learned about the um, Bath COVID-19 patient, that person uh, attended an event at the Bath uh, Fire Department and also uh, a dinner there at the Bath Fire Department and also went into the Taylor Nursing Home in Bath. That's what they say about the Bath COVID-19 patient. Uh, the Hornellsville COVID-19 patient, uh, they're still collecting information on that and um, we still don't have a lot of information uh, publicly on, uh, made public on that at this point. They say both patients are quarantined not at hospitals, but at their homes. And they say that uh, 
Uh, both patients' families, are uh, the people who live in their households, I should say, uh, as well, are uh, quarantined as well. It's a total of 16, they say, quarantined at the moment in Steuben County. Again, two confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Steuben County, one from Hornellsville, one from Bath. Keep listening to AM 1480 WLEA.